Break. All right, back on Golden Black Live with Dr. Andy Messicar, who is the Walter Professor for, can for Cancer Structural Biology as well. I get that all kind of close, but mo more importantly to me, he's the interim director, director of the Center for Cancer Research, a man wearing a lot of hats. I messed up your title. Make, set That's me tough. straight. No, no worries there whatsoever. It's a long title. And it, as you said, right now, it's interim cancer center director. And so everything uh, I'm all in for uh, getting our name out there and getting what we're doing out there to listeners and want them to understand what the Purdue Center for Cancer Research is all about. Well, the Purdue Center for Can Cancer Research has had a long relationship, not only with Golden Black, but also with, with the, uh, with athletics. And Talking about uh, an upcoming event, uh, November, excuse me, October 15th, the game already sold out when Purdue hosts Nebraska, but really a big event in terms of uh, hammer down cancer. But what are the challenges of this event? And you, we've, we've heard you talk about it, you and I have talked about this, just being able to remind folks, this is for research at the Center for Cancer Research at Purdue. So give us a little bit about, you know, the, why that's unique, why Purdue is unique for people that might not know, but also why this event's really important. Yeah. So first off, let's talk about, you know, the event on our Hammer Down Cancer Day. I think, you know, everybody wants to hammer down cancer. You know, one in two men will uh, have cancer. And one in three women will have cancer, which you know, statistically, Alan, that means we are all going to be touched uh, and infected by cancer in our somewhere in our lifetime. And it's absolutely crucial that we do everything in our power to knock it out. So, you know, everybody across the globe wants to do this. But specifically, you know, at, at our Purdue Center for Cancer Research, which is going to have its 45th birthday next year, right? We're 44 years uh, we've been at Purdue and we have been in what's called a National Cancer Center Institute, a uh, designated center. There are only 71 in the United States that have this. This is like the gold standard yeah. of uh, cancer centers, right? There are over 1,500 cancer centers, but we're designated and have been designated because of the quality of our research that's happening right here on the Purdue campus. Yeah. All right. So the hammer down cancer game is all about the Center for Cancer Research at Purdue University and making all of our fans and listeners aware that there are 115 faculty on this campus that are working every day to come up with new solutions and innovative solutions for cancer care. And the donations that we get through this game and throughout the year, 100 percent of those are used in the fight against cancer, all for research, okay? And we want all the listeners to know that this is Purdue, the money stays here at Purdue, it goes directly to research, and it helps to support the faculty, their students, their postdocs, their undergrad students. We have under a lot of undergrads working in these labs. So a lot of the fans out there right now in that student section are essentially a number of them are probably working to fight cancer in the labs of a number of our professors. Yeah, it's an extremely, I, I, to me, it's the best that Purdue has to offer because you're, you're, it's a common cause and the, the most important cause, but you, you're utilizing the best, not only students, but faculty together. And talk about that because it's, it's biologists, it's engineers. You, you mentioned that briefly, but it's really a team effort to make this, make this work and to get that research done. Absolutely. I mean, our researchers are spread across 21 departments on campus, right? Engineering, chemistry, biology, veterinary medicine, health and human sciences. Yeah. Uh, you got electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and you've got the cancer biologist, and we're bringing them all together. You know, this fighting cancer is a multidisciplinary effort, right? It takes a diversity of scientists. Uh, to bring the best ideas and to put them together in ways that we had never thought possible. And that's what's great about being at Purdue, right? These are the types of things we we do, right? We, you know, everybody thinks about the astronauts that we're putting on, yeah. you know, uh, going to put back on the moon, hopefully, yeah. uh, and hopefully in Mars. But let's, let's talk about moonshots for cancer care, yeah. right? This is what we're doing here. So we've got our own uh, set of quote unquote, astronauts working in, in our labs to try to make a difference uh, uh, for life. 
you know, you've done uh, working as as an interim, but uh, hardly hardly that that means no days off and trying to juggle about twelve hats is the way I see it. And obviously, uh, replacing a, a a a legend in my view, Dr. Tim Ratliff, and the importance of talk about you know it's been it's digging ditches, it's it's work to get get to this level because Purdue doesn't have a medical school, all right. those kinds of things that that, that make it tougher. But talk about not only what the, what's been going on and, and the good things that have been going on under Dr. Ratliff and the things that you're working to carry on. Yeah, you know Tim Ratliff, uh, Professor Ratliff, uh, was our our fearless leader for 15 years, and you know we stepped down. And I've been uh, I'm a boilermaker, class 1988 yeah. chemistry, so I'm obviously proud to be back. But I've been working with him for the past 12 years when I got recruited back to Purdue. And so it was sort of a natural for me to, you know, come in and, 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 and fill his shoes, right? We're uh, searching, doing a national search for uh, another director. But the advantage of working is, you know, hand in hand like that for a number of years have been, uh, we can still keep the momentum, uh, which is essential because our, that, that designation I mentioned earlier, that comes every five years. That's a 900 page proposal. We're raked over the coals to make sure yeah. that we have the cutting edge research that, uh, you would come to expect with such a high designation. So we've got to keep it moving. We there's no no time to rest here. It's yeah. uh it's all in all the time. Uh exactly what you know we want from our our football team, right? That's yeah. <laughs> got to keep it moving. You got to keep moving the chains. That is the truest, the truest statement. Talk about it. There's really a lot of exciting research and things going on. Three FDA approved uh, opportunities. Yeah. Well, well, talk about that. And, and because everybody wants to, well, what are you doing today? What What is the newest thing that's being produced from the Purdue Center for Cancer? Yeah, you know, this is a this is a fantastic year uh, for for cancer uh, and fighting cancer and Purdue University. You know, we always talk about we want to get to the cure, we want to get to the solutions. And so obviously the finish line for those are having FDA approvals and, you know, yeah. worldwide approvals uh, for cancer treatments. And we're really proud of uh, Professor Phil Lau in the Department of Chemistry, who's been working for over 30 years yeah. to try to come up with what's called targeted therapies, which is basically, you know, taking a, a, a drug right? That's targeted only to the cancer cells and not the, not your normal cells, right? To basically get around those side effects. So this year alone, so going back to November of 2021, so not, you know, we're not even less than a year, uh, Cytolux. And this yeah. is a, uh, an agent that basically will seek out ovarian cancer and it will cause it to glow green when shined light on it. Okay. So what this is doing, it's a, it's a way for surgeons to find cancer that they may not have seen with their, their normal eyes when they're removing it from, from a patient. So by having Cytolux um, through his, in this case, his company, a startup company that's called um, uh, on target. Uh, now you can visualize it like never before. And that's critical especially in ovarian cancer, because you, you, the cases that come back are because uh, the surgeons just couldn't get all of the tissue. Yeah. So this, that's huge. Uh, now that's for surgeons, but he also has come up with, uh, and through his company Endosite, another startup company yeah. that he has that Novartis purchased a few years ago for $2.1 billion. That's a B billion, <laughs> right? Because of the... Uh, the promise of prostate cancer uh, targeted therapies. So that was approved in March. So it's called Pluvicto. And what it does is it seeks out prostate cancer. And these are, you know, late stage prostate cancer patients that really have nothing left. Uh, and this is showing re has shown remarkable results through phase two and phase three. So that's one of the reasons Novartis you know, purchased Endocyte and now has taken it through to to reach an FDA approval. But simultaneously, he uh, through his company also developed a, 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 another FDA approved uh, agent, which is basically to light prostate cancer up in PET imaging. So it's very similar technologies. One's a warhead on its targeting agent, and the other one's basically uh, a light. Basically, it shows up. So. You got a therapy and a diagnostics, and together it's called Theranostics. So those two were approved on the same day because you use them to say, did I get, where's the cancer? Let's treat the cancer and let's come back and ask the question, did we get rid of it all? So 
that platform, this targeted platform, is it, it doesn't end here. You can take this into multiple different types of cancers, and this is what's happening here uh, in, in not only in Purdue, but obviously his, the multitude of companies he started uh, based on technology that was invented here at Purdue, patented here at Purdue. Uh, so, you know, Boilermaker fans out there, hey, you should get out there and shout at the mountaintops that Purdue is inventing drugs to save lives through cancer. And that's, you know, th that's what we're here to do. And breaching that finish line here in this past year basically makes this hammer down cancer game all that more meaningful because now you're seeing what we can do and what we can achieve together at Purdue University. Yeah, it's, it is. And I have seen, uh, uh, and, and you can go to those, and I'll, we'll put a link to the site too. There's lots of information about that. It is amazing the, 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 the effect of both of those drugs. And uh, just for the lay person, and you can't be any more of a lay person than me, uh, it, it is extremely impressive and, and really quite, uh, quite uh, motivating, uh, quite inspirational about what the work is being done. When you look at the, and, and you, you know, as a scientist and where you are with this, it's always a question I ask optimistic about, you know, you're, you're obviously, you have to be, I think somewhat optimistic just by, by the work that you do, but um, is this moving faster than you, than, than you thought? Is it, or is it moving slower or is it just moving at the, at the pace you're working so hard that it, you don't even notice what pace it is in terms of the cure for cancer? You know, it never, honestly, it is not happening fast enough. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody's there is happy with the pace of developments for fighting yeah. cancer. We want new, we want new technologies and solutions tomorrow. That being said, you know, for I, uh, from 1970s when Nixon announced the war on cancer and right. the types of treatments that we've had for the last 30, 40 years have been, you know, I don't uh, maybe barbaric's not the same, the word to use. But these agents have all come out of World War, you know, based on World War One chemicals or basically yeah. mustard gas derivatives, and you're essentially, you know, wiping out all the cells. Your hope is to get rid of the more rapidly growing cancer cells, right? So that's what we've been faced with. Yeah. Um, but man, in the last 25 years, we have had a lot of gains in our technology for cancer. Uh, we have seen, you know, these targeted therapies now coming out. We understand better the molecular details of of a cancer cell versus a, a normal cell. And we're taking advantage of that knowledge to be able to basically exploit, here's the bad protein or enzyme in the, in the cell, and we're going to knock it out and we're going to kill the cancer. So as we get more and more information, as we get more genomic information, genetic information from patients, we can tailor what, you know, personalized medicine as to what particular cancer therapy you need and what you need today. So you know, it was slow, but we are on a very upward trajectory of new technologies. You know, and I'll throw one out there. I mean, you know, mRNA vaccines, you from right, yeah, yeah. COVID. Okay, that's been shelved for for years because of the fear of, oh, you know, how are we going to get this out? It, it uh, pharmaceutical companies are afraid to do this, uh, but you know, the the promise has been there. It took a pandemic, unfortunately, to say these this can work. And so, you know, this is sort of a silver lining with COVID and the fact that these mRNA vaccines are absolutely, uh, I would say, miracle breakthroughs, but that is now being applied to cancer. So you're going to see vaccines against certain cancers that are going to be based on the sim same technologies that uh, we are using now with COVID. So to me, Alan, we are in a biomedical renaissance right now. You know, it's hard to recognize it when you're in the thick of it. Um, but I want all the listeners to, out there to know that, you know, this is this is really a great time uh, in our history to be able to see new uh, medical breakthroughs in a, in a, in a real time. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm very hopeful for the future and our ability to, to hammer down cancer uh, even more so than I've just been able to communicate with you here. Well communicated, though, and, and and also for those that want to participate, we've had a lot of our readers and, and uh, viewers support the Center for Cancer Research, the Purdue uh, Challenge 5K, which is uh, scheduled for April as well. That's a, that's a big event, but they also will be able to 
use the uh, QR code and have that opportunity on, on the scoreboard uh, in that Nebraska game. That's people, you need everybody. To, everybody to, that standpoint right. that is it's, it's no donation is is too small and uh those that have the treasure to, to do a lot that's important as well yeah, exactly you know that's a new thing hey we're breaking in the modern era the qr codes and yeah, those are great you know, right to that with your camera phones and basically donate five ten dollars you know think about it you know breakfast club hey uh <laughs> You know, save one for the Center for Cancer Research, right? Uh, you know, hit that QR, get that out there and give your five bucks there and say, you know what, I'm going to help cure cancer today. And uh, we'll, we're really appreciative of, of every dime we get because you can see that it, it's going to go to making things happen and everyone out there can be a part of that, Alan. Yeah, 100% of it goes to research here right at Purdue University, and it is the ultimate boilermaker effort. I mean, it is truly that uh, a group of, uh, uh, it takes everybody to do it. And and I've been amazed even be, having in my role with the Center for Cancer Research is just uh, more students have been involved uh, from a grassroots level, a support level, and uh, obviously the, the great research and great scientists and great uh, uh, people at Purdue University can make it all happen. So that, again, Andy, thanks so much for your time. I really enjoyed uh, the interview. Very informative. And we will keep the uh, keep the uh, drum going about the interest in that. And then come uh, the Nebraska game, uh, get out your phone and support this because it's a, it couldn't be any more important. Great. Thank you so much, Alan. Thanks uh, to Golden Black and you for getting our word out there. Um, this is you know how we do it, right? This is the help we need to let everyone know. All right, we'll be back in a couple of minutes for our next segment of Golden Black Live. And again, thanks to Dr. Andy Messicar. And if you need more information, obviously Google the Purdue Center for Cancer Research uh, or, or we'll also have information on our website. So again, thanks again. And we'll see you in a couple of minutes on Golden Black Live.